Good morning, everybody. It's Jeff Goldberg for the Sales Pro Network on Facebook Live. It's Friday morning. It's 10 a.m. here on the East Coast. And as you know, I'm a sales coach and trainer. I work with both individuals and organizations to help them increase their sales. And I founded the Sales Pro Network to elevate our profession. It's a place where you can come and share your successes, your challenges. You can get coaching from great, uh, great sales coaches like our today's guest, as well as many of my competitors. Uh, and every Friday morning at 10 a.m., we either do a live training or a live interview with somebody who can add value to the profession of sales. And today is no exception. It's my pleasure to introduce you to my new friend, Erica Bose. Do you pronounce it Vassell or Vassell? Vassell. Vassell, the queen of non pushy saying. So please put on your, your best suit, uh, your, your tie, a nice, uh, a nice dress because we've, we're in the presence of royalty. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Thank you so much, my new friend. I'm so excited to be here. I appreciate this so much. It's my pleasure. If you're watching us live, please drop a uh, hello into the comments. If you have not done so, please try to connect your Facebook to StreamYard. Otherwise, I won't know who you are. But good morning, Steve Kent. Good to see you as always. And Erica, I'd like to start with, if you would take just a few minutes and kind of not tell us what you're doing right now. We're going to get to that. But what brought you up to now? What, what What's your past? How, how did you become the queen of non-pushy sales? Okay, well, I'm just a girl who grew up very poor, always feeling less than in everything, every capacity, wherever I lived, you know, in circles, friends or school and things like that. And I just always felt like I wanted to belong somewhere. Okay. And then I guess when I was 16, I was introduced to selling. And I mean, my, my world just changed after that. I was like, oh my gosh, this is something I'm good at. I feel empowered. People are buying products from me. They're happy. And um, it just, it really just changed my life. And I believe that in selling, we're really just serving others. And that just made my, my heart just fill up. So that's how I got here. <laughs> got it. And, and what were you selling at the age of 16? Oh my gosh. Well, actually, I should say it started at 14. I was selling jewelry, a jewelry business. And then at 16, I was selling men's clothes. Got it. Okay. And, and um, you mentioned a word that I love, empowerment. You said you were empowered by, by finding out that you're able to sell. What is it about selling that empowers you? Oh my gosh. It's you know really serving others and um, fulfilling a need for others. No arm twisting or anything like that. But you know, when someone came in and they might have been flustered or couldn't find something and I could help them, it really just made a difference. And I, I just felt like, wow, finally <laughs> I fit in. Finally I can do something well. And just seeing the joy in people's face and knowing that you had a part of it, that was really the best for me. Yeah. When we met the other day and we spoke about uh, the fact that we both believe that selling is really about serving others and really about helping others. And, you know, it, it comes from, uh, you know, where I first learned it was Zig Ziglar, who said that selling is serving and stop. He actually says, stop selling, start helping. And in, indeed, he used to say, uh, you know, Zig has passed away, uh, I think about 10 years ago. Um, he said that sell comes from the Swedish word selja, S-E-L-J-E, -E, which he said means to serve. It turns out it doesn't. But I love the idea of that because our job is to find enough prospects regularly and serve enough of them so that we can support ourselves and our families and help a bunch of other people do what they need to do. Uh, good morning, Don Levine, our executive recruiter friend from Westbury, Long Island. Steve Kent says, I agree. Our job is to serve others. And uh, good morning, Ryan Dumpy. He says, good morning, Eric and Jeff. Good morning. So, um, so what else have you sold besides jewelry? Well, jewelry, men's clothes. I sold fudge. Um, let's fudge. see what fudge. I sold uh, new and used trucks. Believe it or not, <laughs> I don't know anything about uh, engines or anything like that. But I was the top sales woman um, because I was just, you know, finding the need, pre-qualifying. I didn't need to know all those details, right? Just find the product that suits them. Um, weight loss. <laughs> and I had a restaurant. So I guess you could say I sold food and um, I had a nail and tanning salon. So I sold beauty. And then for almost 18 years, I've been in direct sales in the skincare industry. So quite a range. <laughs> You've been all over the place. And whoever just said, good morning, everyone, Facebook user, I can't see your name. So please put your name in. If you did not connect your account to StreamYard, please put your name in when you say hi. Otherwise, we don't know who you are. Um, you teach a system, which I really want to hear about. It's a way of attracting pre-qualified leads. I think that every person watching this and everybody who will watch it on the replay and everybody in sales wants to know, how do we attract more pre-qualified leads? So I'm all, all right. Okay. Let's, let's I'm gonna... it out, Erica. All right, let me 
share my secrets with you. Okay. So listen, let me just tell you this. First of all, have, have you ever just started talking to someone about your product and, and you're all excited and they're just like, whatever, or they don't seem as excited or they seem excited, but then they ghost you. Well, I believe it's because you did not know if they were interested or what they wanted, right? So for me, I do a survey. So I'm the queen of sale of non-pushy sales, but I'm also the queen of surveys that sell and feedback that closes. So I use strategic surveys to find out what people are interested in. Okay. So you attract them with your survey, you gather your information and gives you pause to find out what they're interested in. So of course you can serve them, right? And then it's so easy to get on the phone or email or text or whatever you're doing to get that appointment so you can hold your presentation because they were open they knew exactly you know what was going to go down and it was so easy so i've been using these surveys actually back when i had my nail and tanning salon i had a survey when people came in of course when i did weight loss i mean you couldn't have someone walk in the door and you can't just say okay clearly you're fat you need this product right <laughs> so you, you needed to take them on a fast journey as to what they wanted how much they wanted to lose right and the genius about these surveys and it works for all industries i use it in the car business i use it for a filmmaker i use it for everybody is that it takes the person on the fast journey, okay? And they're they're like just they're being honest because I don't know why they they know the survey's going to you, okay? But for some reason they're so honest, <laughs> so they're going on this fast journey through what your products can do for them. And at the end, now they're I say touch your nose. They're super curious as to what's going to happen. And also, you've pointed out that problem and that pain point that they might not have known that they really had. So it's just genius. At the end, it just it works really really well. I love that. And good morning, Valerie Heffron, the queen of uh, the Sales Pro Network. At least half the people in here came because she came. She's a real leader. Um, wow. So um, when you say surveys, are you talking about mailing out surveys to the mail? Are these surveys that you put on Facebook or LinkedIn, like I do uh, every now and then, polls? Is that, that the kind of thing you're talking about? No, it's, I use something called JotForm, uh, J-O-T-F-O-R-M. You can make five surveys for free on there, okay? So I use, I make them, they're very strategic. Now, you can't just go whip one up by saying, like, name, rank, serial number, okay? <laughs> like, I use strategy behind my surveys, okay? Like, where you place things are so important, the way you word questions, okay? So I do put them on, you know, Facebook, but I find that, you know, private message is best, you know, because it's more personal. You know, people want to feel special. I I do them in the mail. I use a, a great tool, which I could tell you about another day about how I use the mail service and I buy um, lists that are done through Equifax. So you know that they're like, they're good. Okay. And I send a postcard with a QR code. I love a QR code. I'm obsessed with a QR code. If you're, if everyone's not familiar, it's like a cute little puzzle piece, put those on a postcard and about one in 20 are um, responding that way. So I do it that way. I also do, you know, of course, if a client already, I would send it out to them to rekindle a relationship. So I use it in many ways. I even use it out about in town. Um, I use a QR code that goes to my survey and I have people enter that way. So they're, they can be used in a wide variety of ways, but it's not just like a poll. It's actual a form. And that form makes a, like a, you know, like a, uh, um, Excel spreadsheet so you can color code it. So you know where you stand with everyone. Use it. You know, you gotta be strategic with everything, right? <laughs> so that's how I use it. And, Oh, 20 something years it's been it's been working got it that's great and, and so people are almost pre-qualifying themselves for you so you're not wasting a lot of time chasing people who really have no interest in anything that you've got and you're investing your time wisely I, when i work with my clients you know, i work on both mindset and skill sets and you know i find that a lot of times people are chasing prospects that aren't really prospects they're really suspects they, they haven't qualified in any way shape or form and i also find and i'd like to get your feelings on this that Salespeople tend to chase every prospect equally, and I don't believe they are. And there has to be some system, whether it's pre-qualifying them like you do or qualifying them once you've got them in the pipeline, to find out, is my time being invested well or am I wasting it? Because as far as I'm concerned, we don't have any time to waste. I don't know about you. Uh, you're, you're a heck of a lot younger than me, but I got three kids in college. I've got no time to waste. Daddy still needs to sell and make some money. So I, I think it's brilliant. You, you, also, you also use birthdays. How, how do you use birthdays? 
Oh my goodness, you've done your research on me. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, where is he finding all this? He's like psychic. <laughs> so yes, um, first I'm of all, thank you for saying I was younger because now I can't focus. <laughs> but <laughs> so I just want to address that. Yes, I'm um, not the younger part, but your question was that um, I do believe that sometimes salespeople kind of go after the person they think is going to be easy. That's going to be non-threatening. <laughs> you know, sometimes the person who's really sharp, we're scared of. So we're chasing these people that are aren't even interested and then and then we kind of like self-sabotage ourselves and now we're all upset because we got all these no's well they didn't even want it in the first place okay so i i, I really don't ever talk to anyone unless they fill out my survey because i i don't want to waste my time you know i've been there done that bought the t-shirt you know okay so for um the birthdays so i do again through the mail through email through text whatever i do send birthday a birthday goodies and it's guess what it's a survey where they claim their birthday goodies but it gets me back in front of my clients or someone you know maybe a new prospect it gets me in front of them because isn't that what all we know we, we want that if we can get in front of somebody right we can sell them something but we have to get in front of them so i use birthdays to do that and you know everybody's got one maybe not everyone wants to celebrate it but you know it does work it works very well so it's about honoring people too you know what i mean not everyone remember when we were little we'd love a birthday we'd get a card from our grandma or aunt with 10 bucks and now i don't know about you my birthday is in a couple of weeks i'm thinking i might have to buy my own stuff here you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah my birthday was about a month ago and uh at my age it's well it's an, it's an occasion to celebrate that i've made it another year but i actually call my mother on my birthday to thank her because oh. I didn't do any work. She's the one who did all the work that day. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I love being alive and having another birthday to celebrate. But yes, it's not quite the same as, as it was when I was eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that, that concept, something you just said rings so true for me. Um, you have to make people feel special. And most of us do not go through life feeling special most of the time. And if we as salespeople can focus on the other person instead of us and what we want, what we need. And, you know, I, I call it having commission breath because prospects can smell that. But if we make them feel special, which most people don't get most of the time, we have a better chance of them starting to like us and trust us and build that rapport that we know is needed to uh, have the foundation for us doing what we want to do, which is engage them in a conversation and eventually have them choose to do business with us. Does that sound right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's what I tell people when, for example, um, if a salesperson does not follow up with somebody, but if in my opinion, that means they're focused on their selves, right? Because if that person said, hey, yo, that's how I talk. <laughs> I'm interested, right? Um, and then you don't follow up. It's hurtful. You know, I went to buy some furniture. This was like five months ago. I'm still mad. Okay. I spent five hours with this man, right? He had all my contact information. I was supposed to go the next day that my husband's like, yeah, I don't think that's the right piece of furniture. I'm like, okay, well, surely the guy will call me because I don't know what I did with his business card. He still has not called me. Okay. So five hours with this man. So now what do you think happens in my noggin? Oh man, he thinks I couldn't afford it. He didn't like me. You, you start playing all this stuff in your head and it's ridiculous, you know? And now I won't do business with that company because clearly they don't have a good follow-up system. I should have received a coupon, an email, something. What if my furniture, the leather rip, they wouldn't be able to help me if they can't even find out where it happened to me, right? <laughs> so, you know, those things, but if you don't follow up, it, to me, it's just hurtful. And, you know, we just, we never want someone to feel that way about us. We want them to be excited to hear from us, to talk to us. So if anyone's having an issue following up, Remember, that means you're focusing on you. Switch it around. Go and serve that person. And my gosh, your sales will be so much higher when you focus on serving versus selling. Yeah, and it's not only hurtful, it's foolish. Th th this salesperson you're talking about, if he had been smart enough to reach out to you maybe a week later, just, hey, uh, I'm just calling to check in. Did you come to a decision yet? Is there anything else I can help you with? You would have felt like he cared about you and you would have been saying nice things about him right now instead, yes. of, instead of telling us that there's no way you would ever do business with him. I find that happens all the time. People have this um, mind trash, the, the, this preconceived notion about how things are supposed to be. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, I bought my car, a new car recently. Uh, and I bought it from the same guy I bought it from last time. He's a car broker uh, because a car broker means I don't have to go in and deal with the idiots in the in the dealership. Hey, and hey, I, hey, you know I sold cars. Don't be talking about my people. 
I'm talking about the <laughs> other idiots, not you. No, look, 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 I, let's face it. Most car salespeople are true scumbags. Not all. I, I know lots of really good ones. And the guy, I, the guy I deal with is a terrific car salesperson. Okay. However, uh, my point is I, I invited him to come to my networking group, which uh, I'm a huge fan of. I get about 50% of my business from the networking group I'm in. It's a great group. It's high end. It's more expensive than most, which attracts a higher end uh, member. And I've invited him numerous times to come. I said, you've got 35 people who could not only be your prospects, but they know a lot of people too. Jeff, I don't like to network. And here's what happened at the, at the meet. Wait a minute. Just yesterday, we had our meeting. And one of the members in introducing himself was in his car. He's saying, oh, I'm really excited. I'm in my brand new car. I just bought it a few days ago. And I really had a hard time. I didn't realize how much the, the uh, you know, the supply chain things uh, disruption is preventing people. I, I had to search for days just to find a car I could buy. Now, if my broker had come to a meeting a month or two ago, this guy would have called him immediately. It, it's foolish. We're, we're, people waste so much time and opportunity by not doing what you're talking about, making people feel special and especially following up. You know, you've, you've got to let people know that you want to do business with them. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're not, you, it's almost like they're waiting for you to invite them. They may have a need for what you've got, for what you offer or I offer. But unless we say, hey, I'm a sales coach. I help people with non-pushy sales. Would you? Are you interested in chatting about that? It gives them the opportunity to say no, but it also gives them the other opportunity. Exactly, exactly. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, over, all over here on Facebook land, some of us, you know, we just think everybody knows what we do. And I bet you guys, I'll give you a little challenge. If you go over to your Facebook, your friends area, and I bet you, if you could just go to 10% of your friends list and just reach out to them, ask them to fill out a survey, you know, open the lines of communication, do something. I bet you're going to find out that the mo most of those did not even know what you do. <laughs> and we just think everyone knows everything and they don't. And the other thing is over on Facebook land, when we see that word friends, we think we have to like really know them in real life and be friends and you don't, they're acquaintances and it's okay to reach out to them, but they might have a need for what you have. And wouldn't you be crushed if you found out that they bought a BMW from somebody else or they bought something, a house from someone else. And you're like, yo, they're my friend. Why didn't they buy from me? Because they didn't know that you sell that. <laughs> so go ahead and reach out to them today. Or, or they did, they knew, but they didn't think you wanted to do business with them because you never said, Hey, if you ever need yes. a BMW, I'd love to chat with you about it. Uh, I, I think the the thing is, and by the way, good morning, Beth Granger, who happens to be a facilitator in uh, the group that I'm in and an incredible LinkedIn coach. Uh, good morning, Fran Cole Hebler down in uh, Texas. Yeehaw. Um, I think part of it is we don't want to be seen as pushy. And I know I'm talking to exactly the right person about this because you are the queen of non-pushy sales. And, you know, I was so excited when I, I you know, when you responded to my, uh, my request uh, for uh, speakers and uh, we started chatting because I'm I'm exactly the same way. Look, I, I shared with you the other day that I sold Encyclopedia Britannica for eight years door to door. It was a very pushy sale. We had to. It was a one call close, a hundred percent of the time. If if they didn't buy on the spot, they were never ever buying. And I know how to push. But that was forty years ago, and today's consumer is way more educated, and it's so easy for them to. Use the little Google machine and say, oh, I don't like this coach. Let me find another coach. I don't like this BMW dealer. Let me find 17 more within a 15-minute drive. So can you talk a little bit about your philosophy of non-pushy sales? Yes, absolutely. So non-pushy sales is what I'm all about, okay? And I also call it like more of an educational sale, right? I'm not saying I'm selling educational materials. I'm saying the process is educational. So basically, I pre-qualify them. I know exactly what they want. And here's the kicker. I only talk about what they said they were interested in, okay? So if I start talking about pumpkin seeds <laughs> and they were not interested in pumpkin seeds, now I am pushy. I'm pushing on the pumpkin seeds on them and they don't want pumpkin seeds, okay? So I only talk about what they're interested in. And then that might open it up to talk about some other things, but that's what I start with. And that builds rapport. And now they trust me. Now they're like, okay, she's not going to push the pumpkin seeds on me. I didn't want pumpkin seeds, right? And they believe in me. They trust me. They look to me as the expert and as the person who's going to come in and solve their problems. And it works very well. What happens is when we start talking about all these other things that we don't know if they're interested in, that's when the push comes. Okay. So 
if you if you just start talking and talking like i said before about your your information your products and that person never said i want to hear about that or i'm interested or i have a need now they're like what what's happening you know and they and they perceive you as being pushy i never want anyone to feel like that i want them to feel like okay erica took time with me she wanted to serve me she wanted to help me with x y and z and that's what she did now we built the relationship now the next time we'll talk about something else and, and it works amazing you'll be so surprised how much more you will sell when you're solving what they said they wanted now of course your survey has to be strategic so you're getting it out of them right but it, it works it works so well so you, if i'm hearing you right you're saying let's make it all about them not all about us i want to sell you pumpkin seeds because i want to sell you pumpkin seeds but if you don't like pumpkin seeds if you tried to sell me pumpkin seeds you'd have a very hard time i don't like pumpkin seeds i don't like i like pumpkins at halloween but it's not my thing but right. uh so so um by the way if anybody has any questions for erica please drop them into the comments and i'll be glad to pass them on and i'm sure she'd be happy to answer them so how do we find out what people need? Strategic questions, very strategic questions. Here's the kicker, guys. The answer to all the questions is what you sell, okay? So you have to be very strategic in your wording, okay? And I and I teach a course on this, but I mean, anyone can make a survey. You know, you just have to make sure you're wording this so that the answer is your product or your service, okay? So now when they go through that survey, they're ready, they're open, they understand there is a need. So now when you have your chit chat with them and you're like, oh, I see you wanted help with blah, blah, blah. Oh, let me, can I show you something that will help you with this? Oh yes, okay, well here's the pumpkin seeds or here's the whatever, you know, here's the car. Um, it, they're just like, whoa, and it's fast guys. See, I don't believe, see I am a former New Yorker, okay? Everything's gotta be fast, okay? <laughs> so, you know, it's a very fast journey. See, I don't play around with all this mushy stuff, okay? <laughs> like I don't do all this courting or whatever you call it. Um, you know, I wanna know, are you interested? I solve the problem and then, you know, they go into automation. I'm not spending all this time, you know, building this whole big, long relationship to finally bring up my product or service 10 years later when they don't even want it anymore. They already bought it. It's fast, guys. It's fast, but it's fast, but they feel like I serve them. And it was all about them. Just like you said, Jeff, it's truly what it's about. But guys, it can be so much faster. A lot of salespeople, they're just waiting for the proper time. You know, they're sending this, they're sending that, and then it, they're waiting. And that time may never come unless you just get to the point. <laughs> so you're kind of saying that, you know, if the pretty girls across the dance floor, instead of just giving her the eye a million times, how about walking over and having a chat with her and seeing if she wants to dance? You got to get your patootie up, get over there and just find out because otherwise you're wasted all night, right? Thinking of all the words you're going to say. And now this guy swoops in and now, and you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Back to the bar I go. <laughs> you know, not, you just, not only, not only all the words you're, you should be saying, but what if, what if she turns me down? What, what if we get rejected? And, you know, I think we all have to understand that rejection is part of the deal in sales. And if you don't understand that you're in the wrong business. Because I, I don't know about you, uh, I, I know you're a sales coach like I am. I don't close everybody. In fact, I close less than 50% of the people I first speak with, which means I have to understand that at least half the time I'm going to get rejected, but I'm okay with that. I don't love rejection, but I do know it's a part of the game that I choose to play in order to make a living and serve people, which is sell. And, and if you, you know, look, do I love being rejected? Who does? But, you know, I, I've heard the, the advice a million times, you know, you don't take it personally. Well, guess what? They're saying no to you. But I think the trick is if you're going to take it personally, take it personally for five seconds and then turn it around. You know, use your the brain that wh whatever is up there gave you call it God or Jesus or Buddha or anything else. But uh, taking it as, OK, I'm not thrilled that I got rejected, but I'm one step closer to a yes, because I know if let's say I do have a 50 percent closing ratio for every one person that says no, somebody's going to say yes. Exactly. But also, I'm going to ask everyone to, to, to switch something, though. I don't believe they rejected you, Jeff. I, re I believe that they rejected what you said. So whatever that offer was is what they said no to. They didn't say, Jeff, I hate you. You're a scumbag. They just said no to what you offered. OK, so maybe that offer was not what they were interested in. So I believe maybe you could go back in two weeks, three weeks, two months from now with a different offer. 
because maybe that would be something they were interested in. So switch it up, <laughs> switch it up. But I don't think they're rejecting you. And that's, you know, sometimes that's it because I mean, look at me, my whole life feeling less than the ugly duckling never fit in. So it's hard for someone like me, of course, when somebody says no, cause then all of a sudden it starts, oh, I'm not good at this, blah, 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 you know, cause I also have three brain injuries and a learning disability. So that pops in, oh, it's my brain, my stupid brain. No, no, no Erica. They did not reject you. They rejected what you said. So I keep a tracker and I write what I invited them for. And then I invite them for the opposite the next time. So I believe all is not lost. <laughs> a no means no right now, but it doesn't mean a no forever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you. And um, Can you give us an example? Because you said something a few moments ago that rings so true for me. Uh, I believe that sales really is all about the questions. It's not about what most people think it is, which is presenting and closing. And, you know, I'm sure you are, and I, I'm a good presenter and I know how to close, but that's not what closes business for me. It really is to me all about the questions. Could you give us an example? So you, you sell sales coaching and at the end, you're going to give some uh, information about how people can reach you if they want to. Um, if you were trying to sell me sales coaching, what, what kind of questions, what are some of the strategic questions that you'd be asking me, assuming I wasn't a sales coach? Well, first, I would ask you about your leads. How do you keep track of them? And I would ask you specific questions about, like, do you keep them in an Excel sheet, in a shoebox? You don't know where they are. You know, um, where are your leads? OK, then I would ask you, um, how often do you follow up? once one or two times never you know um when i feel like it you know i need to understand like where your noggin's at okay i need to know do you have a process in place do you need a process and i must say i'd say 99 percent of the time in sales coaching it's about their process they don't have systems in place you know of course they need the keywords but the systems is really where it's at so i've been asking you a lot of questions about systems then I would ask you um, what your goal is, because I want to work with people who have a goal. Because if you say, I don't have a goal because I'm never, I'm not good at this. Well, I don't really focus on the mindset as like you do, right? I'm really about let's let's do the systems and let's get you some you know questions, right? But um, all the other stuff, I a little bit, but not like you. You're really in there. You know, you're really great at that. I, I don't like that. <laughs> I just want to work with motivated people, okay? <laughs> I'm getting older. I just need to know you're motivated. So then I find out, like, if you're motivated, things like that. And that gives me an idea um, where you're at in the sales process. And maybe you've been spinning your wheels and, and um, you know that your product is great, but you don't understand why people are saying no. Or you're posting on social media, but you're not getting leads. Um, so all of that will help me to understand what you need. And then I can prescribe a little recipe for you, you know, on how to help you. But very strategic questions like that. You'd be amazed how many people are like leads. Oh, I don't know where they are. You know, they're not, not having a follow-up system. And that's really key. That's to me about if you want to serve people, you need to know how many times you have to follow up when and things like that. Yeah. And most people don't do enough. They get they either give up too easily or they chase the same leads over and over forever when there's no shot. And I find that's a great recipe for a lack of success, calling the same <laughs> leads over and over, contacting them a million times when they're really telling you no. And, yeah. and there's lots of ways that people say no, like ghosting you, you know, not returning your emails, not returning your calls, never engaging with you, you know, go out and find somebody else. I think that and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, that, you know, one of the keys is in order to be able to take the beating that we get, because most people say no, we've got to have a lot of people in the pipeline. So we've got to constantly be doing the QR codes and the birthdays and the surveys or whatever else you're doing to bring in qualified leads so that you can have the ability to say, oh, OK, this one said no to me, but here's 75 more people that I can reach out to in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting to me, though, when I, you know, I lead a team of over 75 and, and I'll look at their numbers and I'll be like, hey, what, what's going on? Well, I'm working with so and so. I'm like, anybody else? Because it's almost like they're determined to get this one person to say yes, that they put all their energy and they forgot about all the people who are like, hello, over here. I want you. So, yes, you do need to know when you need to 
you know, you know, pull back a little bit on it. But you've got to always have fresh people and you can't just sit on your laurels and be like, okay, I'm good. All these people love me. It's always getting new people. That's the key. Okay. So uh, someone's always coming in that pipeline. Someone's always leaving. You just, it has to be steady though. You know, for me, I wouldn't want to be in a position where I'm scrambling. Like I've got nobody. What am I going to do? Cause that's desperation. Okay. And then people are going to feel it. You just want to be steady. If you have your process of pre-qualification, what you're going to do with them, right? How you're going to close the sale and your automation, you're good. Okay. You just, you're at ease. Now let me just get the people pre-qualified. Okay. Boom. And then you're always getting people that way. And it works very well. No more scrambling. <laughs> That's the key. Don't scramble. No scrambled eggs. Okay. <laughs> and, and it's the same thing uh, when you're negotiating. You can't negotiate effectively if you need one deal too badly. If you've only got one deal that you're working on and the person's negotiating with you, you're not going to be able to negotiate effectively. You're going to cave right away because you need the deal. You've got to have lots and lots of prospects at all time. And my experience is, and I'd love to hear yours as a coach, you know, that people simply don't prospect. They, a, you're right. They don't have a system uh, and, and they just don't have, they don't know how to do it well. Uh, and I think it's, it comes back to that we fear that rejection. Because much of prospecting is rejecting. It's why I like your survey idea so much because you're helping people to self-select out. You, you, mm -hmm. When you speak to people, I'm assuming you're only really speaking to people who've already self-selected. They've said, I, yeah, yeah. The I never talk to anyone. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I never talk to anyone who has not filled out a survey. So if anyone wants to talk to me about business, they have to fill out my business survey. I'm not wasting my time with people. You know, plus, what if I don't like what they said? And I can just tell this is not going to be a good fit. I don't want to have an appointment with them. And I don't have to, <laughs> you know, um, so, but everybody for any of my businesses, they have to fill out a survey to get in my space. And that really weeds out the people like what if it takes them to my calendar and they don't book a calendar, you know, an appointment. Okay, well, now I have a way to follow up with them right but also you know i've got their information i can reach out to them a lot of people just send their calendar link like this did this happen since the pandemic remember how it used to be like uh, i'll buy you a drink now it's let me let me send you my calendly link but guys if you're just sending a calendar link and that person doesn't schedule how are you following up you don't know what they're interested in and you don't have their contact information. So you're missing the boat. So stop sending your calendar link without sending a survey or some type of information, um, some from, some type of form for you to gather their information. Because otherwise you're, you're really stuck. You've sent out a million calendar links and you got nobody. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a single person on this call or whoever's going to watch on the replay that doesn't want to talk only to qualified prospects. But too often we're using that shotgun approach. Let me talk to everybody and find enough people. Now, that that it's certainly a philosophy that could work, but how much more strategic, how much more intelligent, and how much less of a time waster to let people self-select? I mean, I, I, I don't know how much time it takes you to use your system, but I'm guessing that you've got it automated to a point where you can send out lots and lots of these surveys to multiple people at the same time so that there's always enough of them coming in who are self-selecting. Do you have any statistic? Am I correct, first of all? And do you have any statistics on when you send out surveys? What's the percentage of people that actually do respond positively? Um, well, this is the thing. Only will respond. I guess that my philosophy is if they took the time to fill it out, they're interested, right? Because why did they sit there? It's like, it's like two minutes. Okay. Um, why did they sit there for two minutes and answer these questions? And then there's a part in there, they actually have to type. So it's not like, let me race against A, B, A, B, you know what I mean? Um, they have to write in there. So my, my opinion is if they took the time to fill it out, they're interested. Okay. So I don't know my statistics about how many I've sent out that didn't respond, but I do know that from the surveys that I get back, about 92% become my clients. Wow. Wait a minute. The people who fill out the survey and send it back, 92% of those become clients. Yes. Yes. Well, so I'm not. Imagine... Think... Go ahead. Huh? What did you say? I was going to say, I think we all can't wait till we get to the end and find your contact information so we can figure <laughs> out how to do that. Yeah, you, you close at a much higher rate and it's a lot faster because they were open. <laughs> they knew what it was. It wasn't a cold call, really. You're just asking them to fill out a survey. And guys, seriously, how non-threatening is that? You know, would you be willing to take my survey? 
<laughs> so if they say no to the survey, they didn't say no to me. They just said no to a survey, right? <laughs> well, we, have, we have a question. Beth Granger wants to know, do some people get insulted about having to fill out the survey? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Because so many do, um, you know, why? Okay, so why would they be insulted? It's about serving them. I don't know, Beth, what would be insulting about filling out a survey? Now, listen, guys, it's about how you presented it too, right? So it's not like, yo, Jeff, fill out my survey. I want to sell you something. <laughs> it's not like that. You have to word how you're presenting your survey in a different light as well. So maybe you're saying, Hey, Jeff, I'm doing market research on um, selling um, during the pandemic. Would you be willing to take up, take my survey? Sure. Was that scary? <laughs> uh, no, and I'm not insulted, but I think it's a reasonable question. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, good morning, Peter Ekstrom, one of the kings of cold calling. That's somebody you should definitely meet. Peter Ekstrom's a smart guy, okay. really knows about cold calling. He says, he or she that works the process awaits the result in peace. So I think he's agreeing process is a very good thing. Uh, it I, I is. Want, yeah, yeah. Peter's a good guy. I should definitely introduce the two of you. Hey, Peter. Um, <laughs> um, I want to come back to something you mentioned earlier that you you don't talk, you don't do any of the mindset stuff. You don't like that stuff. So um, how important or not important do you think mindset is when selling? Uh, is it all skill or does attitude matter? No, of course, attitude matters. What I mean by that is I don't want somebody that I have to be pumping up like a cheerleader, okay? Although I'm nice and sweet, it's draining. So so I want somebody who is motivated to take change, right? So what I mean is I don't want to work with someone who's who's just, you know, is so afraid to bring up selling, who's so afraid of everything and is just down in the dumps, you know? I have to protect my energy, so I don't want to work with someone. I have to go from here to here, right? I want someone who I'm gonna take from here to here. Does that make sense? So mindset is critical, okay? Not everyone should be in sales either. If you're so afraid of boom, you know, maybe you shouldn't be in sales. <laughs> but, you know, so that's what I mean. But mindset is critical because, it, and it also, you have to, you just just have to flip that switch that it's not about you. So like me, for someone who has like self-esteem issues, things like that, I can ex I can tell you exactly when my sales were really, really low. I had had a baby. I had gained weight. My husband was deployed. It was just me and my baby. My mom came to live with us. And I mean, uh, here I am, the queen of sales. But th let me tell you what I was doing. Here's my business card. Don't worry, I'll never sell you anything. I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. I can't even believe. But it was it was tied back and my self-esteem was so low. I just fell out of the loop for so long. I didn't know what to do. When I did made my my switch and I was like, this is ridiculous. Why 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 am I so worried about what they think of my appearance? Why am I so worried about this? That has nothing to do with if they're gonna buy from me or not. So when I flip that mindset, all the things change. So it is critical. It is the critical. I'm just saying that I don't want to work with people who are just can't even, you know, get out of bed or do things like that. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And, and uh I, I love how, uh, you know, open and honest you're being with us and about and invulnerable you're being about, you know, how, you, how you've been at various times. I have a dog and, and he's, he's a pug and I call him the beach pug. And we, I often create videos where we're walking on the beach and I often say beach pug don't give AF. And uh, that's kind of my attitude. You know, you, want, you like me? Terrific. You don't like me? I don't give an F. It, 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 I don't need to have everybody love me. I just need to have enough people. And I, I think that's part of the game. Most people are not prospecting. And I don't care whether it's surveys or QR codes or birthdays or cold calls or anything else you want to do. You've got to be doing enough of it. And yes. if you're not doing it consistently, then that's a problem. And we've got somebody, uh, a Facebook user who said, who's a great lead for you, but we don't know who you are. Somebody <laughs> said, I need a process. So if you put your name in there or pay attention at the end, and I'll give you Erica's contact information. Yes, process is key. It makes life easier. Okay, let's and ask. Beth says, I'm often introduced to my prospects, and I wonder, how can I ask them to take a survey before we speak? What's the right way to actually bring up that subject? Beth, I'm not sure what industry you're in or what you sell, okay? Um, I can but, tell you. I can actually but, tell you. Beth okay. is both a facilitator for a very uh, well-known networking group, and her main business is she's a LinkedIn expert. She helps okay. people increase sales by teaching them how to socially sell, how to use LinkedIn effectively, and she's incredible at it, by the way. 
Oh, wonderful. Well, I want to, I want to know you, Beth. <laughs> okay. You so you could say, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you could say something like, um, so let's see. I, I am the blank blank of this organization. I'd love to get to know more about your business. Please fill out my survey. It'll take you to my calendar link so we can, we can chit chat. Very non-threatening. Something straightforward. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. How do you feel about this? I, Cause I'm, I'm a big fan of it personally. I, I love asking people for help. I'm wondering if you can help me. I find that when you do that, you're taking away that attitude that sometimes salespeople give off like they're superior, and you're actually elevating the other person, which makes them feel good. You know, I'm what, when you say, I'm wondering if you can help me, you're implying that they might know something that you don't. Would you use something like that, Erica? I do. I do. Well, the market research, or I'd love to get your feedback, or I'm interested in your opinion, or um, that type of thing really works well, because people love to give their opinion, okay? So if you, you flip it and, and yeah, you like to your opinion, I'm sending yeah. you a survey, Jeff. I pay off surveys all day long. I love surveys. They're fun and it's so non threatening, but people feel valued. They feel like, woo, they thought I was fabulous. They want my opinion, you know, so you made them feel great. So just simply telling them that you love their feedback or you love their opinion, or I know you're a leader in XYZ. I'm doing market research. That's my favorite one. Um, it works well for all industries. Would you be willing to fill out my survey? Now you can add something of what's in it for them. You could say you'll even be answered to win a, a gift card or you'll be answered to win and blah 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 um but i caution you whatever it is they're winning like that gift card or whatever like or if it's a well if it's a prize let's say if it's a prize okay don't give them something that's branded to you okay so if they're if you're going to be entered to win a prize like don't send them like a puzzle game that says aflac on it or whatever you're promoting right so it really should be something for them you know i typically do a 20 dollars gift card you know but it should be something for them that's not like you do you know what i mean like it shouldn't be all about your brand it should be for them as a true gift. starbucks gift card something like that yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And, and Beth says, thank you. I want to know you too. <laughs> All right, we'll get you guys hooked up. Um, a lot of people come to me and ask this question. Jeff, can you come teach me how to close? Or can you come teach my people how to close? And I, I always say the same thing. I'm, I'm happy to teach you or your people how to close, but that's like a five-minute conversation. Uh, how do you teach people how to close business? I know you're you're great at helping them attract business, but you're also a sales expert. How do you actually, when it comes time to ask the question, how do you say the words? What are the words you use when you say, hey, want to do business with me in whatever way, shape, or form you do it? Okay, so this is the thing. Your end is directly reflected by your beginning, okay? So your pre-qualification, you're gonna know all of this information. When you present, you need to you need to be one step ahead of them. You need to talk about, basically overcome all those objections before they bring them up, okay? So for example, let's say you're selling um, a skincare product, okay? And you know they're gonna say, I'm gonna use what I have. So in your presentation, you want to bring up all, you know, well, if you mix these ingredients, you're not going to have the best results. I know that you said that you wanted help with X, Y, Z. This will solve this, blah, 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 right? I've overcome her saying or him saying, I'm going to use what I have, okay? When we get to the end, in my opinion, if you've done a great pre-qualification and presentation, the only thing they're going to find, the only thing they're going to say is it's going to be they're going to pay in full or make payments. That's it. That's the only thing that should be happening. There should be no other conversation at the end. And, and that's my opinion. Okay. So this is how it goes. Okay. So uh, throughout the whole process, if it's several items I'm selling or one thing, I'll say, okay. So what do you think about this? Is this something that you would use? You, you know, they yeah. say no. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go tell them the price because they didn't say yes. <laughs> so then we'll talk about that. Okay. Now what about this? Uh, do, would you see that we should you use this? Do, is there anything you wouldn't use? I, I'm asking all these questions before I get to the price. So when I get to the price, we already agreed she was or he was going to use it, right? Okay, so here we go. It's 2025. Um, would you like to pay in full or make payments? And drink something. <laughs> Don't talk. <laughs> so I teach people really to have water with you so that it'll just shut up. You just can't talk, okay? And I push my fingers together because I'm a talker, right? Um, Don't no. talk. No, I'm not talking, right? But you cannot say anything. The person who speaks first loses. We learned that sales 101 a million years ago who can't speak because it's going to kill you. You're going to be sweating, okay? Because you're going to be like, ah, but 
you can't you can't interrupt their thought process it may seem like 10 hours it's like two minutes if that now let them talk don't butt in and if they say okay well you know the 2000 isn't really in my budget and then you go well we can lower it and they were gonna say but i'm just gonna put it on two cards <laughs> So yes. wait for it, and then you can solve the problem. But remember, they already agreed to everything a few minutes ago. There's no problem at the end. So you have yeah. to have that stellar pre-qualification process, I believe. It should be, it's like two seconds to close it. <laughs> yes, and, and you just made a, a hand motion a few moments ago that I talk about all the time, and it's the <laughs> toughest thing for salespeople to do. It's like, shut up, stop talk. We think in sales, not you and I, but we think we get paid to talk. We don't. You and I get paid to talk, but not when we're selling. We get paid to ask questions and shut the F up. Just listen. Yes, two ears and one mouth. Uh, um, so so you, you, you've also said something which I think is crucial. Let's uncover the objections before we ask them to buy. Let's get all that out of the way. Because once somebody says no to you, you know, the, the way typical trainers train is, you know, go through the process, handle objections, rebuttals after they've said no. Why would you want to do that? Why fight an uphill battle? Let's get rid of all that bad stuff or anything that's in the way potentially before we ask them to buy so I don't have to fight an uphill battle. Make, it makes it easier for them and easier for you. Plus, I always say that if you've been in sales for more than two, two weeks, you already know that all the objections you're going to get. I, I've been selling for 48 years. I haven't heard a new objection in a million years. It's always the same thing. It's so, always the same. I, always. Tell new, I tell new salespeople, listen, because they're like, wow, they just said this. I'm like, you're going to hear that every day. Okay, that's the objection. It's these three things. That's it. Learn, you know, what you're going to say. Now, that's why we talk about it in the presentation, because then they're not going to say that, you know. Um, and also, with the survey, if they're like, oh, I'm too busy to fill out a two-minute survey, that you don't want that person. They're not going to sit through your presentation, right? <laughs> so to me also, if you're at the end and now you're scrambling, you're backpedaling, you're repeating your whole entire presentation, that's your cue as a salesperson. And now you need to be open to coaching and open to growing, right? If you want that bank account to grow, that's your cue. You missed the mark in the presentation. Don't take it personal. Let's just go back and see, okay, what did I say? Look at what they said they were interested in. If, were you talking about yourself and, and, and all of these things about you? Because I'm sure you heard this, right? Um, what's a salesperson is like a potato, right? If there's eyes growing out, the sales process is going downhill. If you are saying the word I, with the letter I, it's, gone, it's going downhill. You're talking about you. It's all about them. So go back and replay. Oh my God, I told them all about my mom and my dog and blah, blah, blah. Well, you lost them because you weren't focused on them. So the next time, no eyes <laughs> and see if it changes. But, you know, it practice, of course. It's practice. Be an eyeless potato. There you go. An eyeless potato. That's your goal in life. <laughs> you know, you said something else, which I, I once again completely agree with. And I think that most salespeople just aren't doing a great job. Um, I'm a big fan of you don't give somebody the price until they're drooling. That you, you can literally see them drool. Well, I take it back, not literally, but they're drooling. They, all they want to know is the price. You can, see, you can see it in their eyes and their body language and the things that they're saying. They're, they're in. Ready. They, they just want it. And all they need to know is the investment. I don't like to talk about price or cost. I, I always call it the investment. But, you know, that's, that's the time to tell them how, how much it's going to cost. Uh, if you do it before then, because that's pretty much what everybody wants to know. Hey, Erica, you've got a course. What's it cost? Well, Anybody who asks that question is not going to buy. What what they really should be asking is, what's it going to do for me? And then let me see if I can. I feel a, it's worth it, and I can afford it. Because my experience okay. is, if somebody finds they, that it, some, what I have to offer is worth it, but they can't afford it, that's not on me. I have no problem with somebody who says I can't afford it. When they say your price is too high, I know I'm in trouble because I haven't shown enough value. But I'm not going to tell you the number. And I'm guessing that like like me, you get calls or emails all the time. Hey, how much does this cost? How much does that cost? What's your program cost? I don't know. I, got, I don't know what you need. Uh, yeah, that's right. So we, let me please fill this out so I can uh, we can have a chit chat and find out you know how I can serve you. But also, this is I said this the other day. Um, I was um, helping uh, someone with sales, and, and the the prospect said, "Well, 
well, how, uh, I don't know if I can afford it. How much is it? And I was like, well, we don't know what you need yet. So please fill this out. And she's like, well, I need to know. I was like, listen, if it was free, would it even matter? Because what if you didn't need it? Let's find out what you need first. So you just have to take control. And I think what happens a lot of times is that salesperson is like you said, commission breath they're desperate, right? And so they're like, oh my God, I'm going to lose them. I'm going to tell them it's $20 million. <laughs> and it's like, holy crap. They don't even know why they need it. You can't talk about the price just remain calm go back to the pre-qualification process if you skip it i'm telling you your end result is not going to be the same you know so yeah and and, and let's not prejudge what somebody oh. has in their pocket i i never uh, i'm not concerned about what somebody has in their pocket of course i'm pricing myself properly but that's not for me to worry about what you can afford and i i find that quite often in fact in most cases People will invest more than they thought they were willing to if they see the value. And the perfect example is real estate salespeople. You tell them, I want to buy a house for $750,000. they are showing you $850,000, $900,000 homes because they know if you get in there, you go, oh, I really want to spend seven fifty. dollars But look at all this extra room or this backyard or the view or something like that. It's all about we've got to show them the value. And I'm looking at the clock. We're quickly running out of time. But uh, uh, I, I have to ask you this, because when we spoke the other day, you said some words that made uh, really rang true for me. Uh, years ago, I, I became certified to become a oneness blessing giver. Uh, it's, it, I'm a very woo-woo guy. I love spiritual stuff. And you teach something called the blessing method. Can you talk about that? What's the blessing method? Okay, this is what I coined my process. Okay, so it's all about making people feel special, finding out what they need, right? And only talking about that. Okay, you never lose another lead because it's hurtful. And remember what I said, I always felt less than and when you don't follow up, it's rude, quite frankly. Okay, so you will never lose another lead. So it's a systematic approach to selling and doing business, okay? So I teach the pre-qualification, the tracker, the system. How many times do you need to follow up? You know, how many days apart? What kind of words do you need to say? Of course, it has to sound like you, but there's some key words, and one word can make a difference, right? And I 100%. teach about automation, because oftentimes we celebrate all these people who said yes. Where are the people who said no, not now? Where are the people who ghosted you? Do, are you just never going to contact them? I'm not saying beat a dead horse, but I'm saying if you ask them one time and you got ghosted, like we still need to follow up. I say their phone could have fallen in the toilet. You don't know why they didn't respond. <laughs> so it's a systematic approach, but it really works well because it's about serving. Being a blessing to others is what I call it, you know, just focus on that service. And it's just a whole system and it's proven and it's proven in, oh, 30 something years, you know, look down, right? Um, it's been proven all this time, but also all industries, you know, cars, planes, you know, film, um, you know, boutiques, restaurants, everything. Yeah. So it's anyone can use it. Got it. And um, what do you see as some of the differences between top producers and an average sales rep? pre-qualification and follow-up for sure, mm, for sure. Gotcha. Well, also three things and the automation, honestly, like, you know, in my skincare business, I have 600 customers. Do you think I can remember all their birthdays? No, but I automatically send them, you know, a birthday card or a gift. So um, that automation piece, it makes me look good, but it makes them feel special. So if I wouldn't be honoring their birthdays, they're not hearing from me, right? And if I didn't check in with them automatically, right, or send them reminders, they're not going to remember me. So I would say that being front of mind is our job. It's up to us to stay front of mind. And a lot of people get it wrong. They think it's up to the customer to reach out. So that could be a big difference between the top producer as well. Yeah, and, and it's it's so easy to get sidetracked with 8 million different things and forget to follow up. And it really is the little things that make a difference. I, I'm often told by prospects and clients that I have the most amazing memory in the world. And the fact is, I smoked way too much weed as a kid. I can't remember a damn thing. I have to look at my driver's license in, in the morning when I wake up just to remember my own name. But I write everything down. Everything goes into my database. Everything is set with a reminder. If you and I speak, Erica, and I say, hey, what are you doing this week? And you say, oh, it's my five-year-old's birthday. I'm setting a reminder for a year from now, minus one week, say, hey, check in on Erica. It's her five-year-old's sixth birthday next week. And when I do that, you're going to go, wow, 
best memory in the world. I love this guy because I remembered something. And, and, and I find that as a salesperson, I'm always paying attention to what people are saying and doing to me when they're trying to sell me something and the method they're, they're using. But it works on me, too. You know, it's those little things that make you feel special where you go, ah, oh, I really like Erica. And when we like somebody, we want to do business with them. And even if we, we haven't decided to do business with them, at least we're more open to the conversation. Exactly. Exactly. Now I know. Now I just remember. Did you say your birthday was last month? It was. Everyone, write that down. <laughs> May third. All right. <laughs> well, look, I mean, think about it. Like, look, this is a Facebook group. I, I love Facebook because I'm an old guy. You know, my my kids want me on Instagram and all kinds of other things. But I, I love Facebook. You're and, gonna give you me know, a complex about my age. We were doing so good a few minutes ago, Jeff. <laughs> I like Facebook too. <laughs> Eric, I promise you're way younger than me. But but the thing is, on, on Facebook, you know, every all your friends know it's your birthday. And, you know, suddenly 200 people, 300 people are wishing you happy birthday. And if they're smart, they're doing the same thing on LinkedIn because LinkedIn, LinkedIn tells you when people's birthdays are, too. And everybody knows it's an automated thing. And it's not the same as uh, as somebody taking the time to go to a store and fill out a Hallmark card and mail it to you. But it still feels good. It's that little it's that little, I know you, I'm paying attention to you, I remember you, I, I care about you. Even though I know all they had to do was type happy birthday, it's still like, ah. Oh. They took the time to type it. Here, I'm going to give you guys one last tip before we go, okay? So if you're going to use my method and you're going to um, have a quiz or survey for birthday goodies, five days after the birthday, don't send it on the birthday because they've gotten 200 million you know, people saying happy birthday and they're just trying to say like, 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 you need to do it five days later. Okay. And it's not, yo, I'm trying to sell you something for your birthday. It's I have some birthday goodies for you, which, you know, here's the link. to claim. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So Erica, we are out of time. I'm sharing my screen right now. Could you tell people how to reach you if they want to? And what are the, some of the things you offer? All righty, so I will offer you, um, your group, a um, customized business tips. You get 15 minutes of my time. There is, um, it's the bit.ly slash EBB survey that will give you my business survey. It's also on my Facebook, um, you know, my profile, okay? Um, I'll give you, if you want free five tips for non-pushy sales, I will send you those. Or I have a group, and it's called Business Talk for Sales, okay? And that's a Facebook group, and it's not a promotion group, though. It's just strictly um free training and then i do this as well i invite people on and i'll do free coaching sessions or i'll interview you so you know maybe you can get some new clients so i love to have you be a part or friend me but friend me at erica vassal i'm switching this to my new um facebook profile so there's only a couple friends there so be my friend <laughs> and erica if somebody wanted to call you uh is there a number they can reach you at in an email or do you oh, prefer to just yeah if you want my cell phone you can text me um it's area code eight six zero two three five six one six six and i will type it in the chat after so yeah i like text or call me um i just i like text do you like text <laughs> i love texts i absolutely do except you know what it drives me nuts when people don't respond quickly you know when somebody takes hours and hours because the thing i love about text is you're almost having a conversation well what if the phone fell in the toilet jeff come on <laughs> <laughs> I'm old and I'm cranky. Don't drop your phone in the toilet. Respond to my text, biatches. All right. Uh, there's a Facebook user who says there's no such thing as a late birthday wish. Valerie Heffron says, thank you, Jeff. And for me, I say thank you, Erica, for investing your time with us and sharing your brilliance so generously. Uh, any final words for you? I am honored to be here, guys. I spent 18 years teaching people how to sell who believe their job was not to sell. I love being in the space of people who use the word prospect, close, and lead. So you are my peeps, okay? So I am honored, Jeff, so honored that you had me here today. Great. And Erica is part of the Sales Pro Network. So if you have questions for Erica, you're always welcome to type them in there. And uh, I'll end this as I always do. First of all, thank you again, Erica. And re please remember, guys, sales is a game of making things happen. So get out there and make sales happen. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.